Treasurer Jim Chalmers is delivering his budget on Tuesday. He has a, has a tough task of balancing cost of living relief measures with not adding to inflation. We've had the announcement, you know, we, we know that there's an, an extra $11 billion getting pumped into addressing the housing crisis, mostly catching those who are most vulnerable, like the homeless and, and domestic violence um, victims. How does he do it? How does he provide cost of living relief without fueling inflation? Yeah, he has to calibrate it because the Reserve Bank has, has warned that if the budget stimulates uh, consumer spending, then the inflation rate will just increase or be harder to bring down. So there's a lot at stake here because inflation is the biggest impact on cost of living. Look, Kenny, um, there's got to be a narrative around a, a budget. The only successful budgets are where people can afterwards say, well, this budget stood for this issue. Um, and by the way, the journalists and media will always, will always tear down a budget by asking people, are you better off mm. as a result of last night's budget? And there's always a column, winners and losers. So it's, in the modern era, budgets are not election winners in themselves. However, they're important to to lay a platform, but you must have a narrative. And he's tried to craft one, as you say, which well, is cost of living and housing. That, if He's got to be careful because if the Reserve Bank decides to keep interest rates high for longer, all the way up to the federal election, yep. you know, are voters going to punish the Albanese government for Absolutely. that? Absolutely, and this budget will be long forgotten. Yep. The main game is interest rates. It's the only game in regard to winning an election in, in the environment of, of cost of living. But you can see he's let out the good news. He's trying to establish a narrative, but there's a lot of spending in there, so the pressure's on. Let's talk about the pro-Palestine protests, the encampments on Australian university campuses that have been going for, for several weeks now. Um, it's left Jewish students on mm. campus feeling unsafe. Does more political action is more political action needed at this point of time so it doesn't escalate out of control like we've seen in the US? Definitely. More political courage by ministers for education and by university vice-chancellors. The, 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 there's an unimaginably horrific tragedy unfolding in Gaza, Kenny, as we all know, the suffering, the loss of life, innocent life. And students are entitled to protest. So by all means, set up the camps, wave the signs, but that's not what most of these demonstrations are. These are uh, chanting intifada, they're chanting from the river to the sea, they're intimidating Jewish students. The hatred of Jews uh, in Australia is, is being pronounced and we have to stand firm against the anti-Semitism, separate their right to demonstrate from the anti-Semitism so blatantly on display. But how do you get... You know, I mean, if you send in the police, it could just escalate the situation. So what do, what do chancellors do in this situation? Like, how do they, how do they get it under control? Um, well, firstly, they do have to have the courage of their convictions and they do have to send in the police where there are acts, acts of hatred spe uh, hate speech or where there's intimidation of Jewish students. I'm sorry, you can't, you, you can't be... Uh, both weak and strong, you've mm. got to make a decision. You don't have to tear down the camps, but you have to take into custody the uh, offenders. Yeah, just come out stronger. Peter McGoran, great to chat with you. Thanks, Thanks so Kenny. much. Have a great Cheers. day.